in order to quickly subdue it. The venom these snakes possess is comprised of potent neurotoxins, which work together to dismantle your nervous system and shut it down. They deliver from 200 to 500 milligrams of venom per bite, and that is enough to take down a small village of people or powerful enough to subdue a moderately sized elephant even uh, in a few hours. Large king cobras have a reputation for holding on after a bite and never letting go, leading to many fatalities from bite causing shock, cardiovascular collapse, and ultimately respiratory failure to the victim. Now here I'm feeding Oracle a 5 foot long monocled cobra. You can really see the size difference between adult kings and most adults from the two cobra genus. And he's aiming for the head right away, his fangs puncture the frozen thought snake, and he makes sure that it's dead before starting to swallow. The process could take from a few minutes to over half an hour, or longer depending on the circumstances. King cobras are pretty immune to native snake venoms, but to what extent, we don't really know yet. And back when Oracle would only take live prey, I've witnessed his hunting methods really often. And it's bite the head, bite the head, bite the head. Or sometimes he'll bite the tail, and as the prey snake turns around, he'll loosen that grip and then move straight to the head before the other snake can do anything. This next video will be a live feeding demonstration, so feel free to skip that if you don't want to see it. A younger king is chasing down her prey after she picked up the scent from half the room away. Now what this king is doing here is, she is narrowed down onto her prey, biting it and doing death rolls, trying to subdue it as fast as possible to reduce the chances of injury and to finish up quickly before attracting any nearby predators. Snakes are the most vulnerable while eating. As I've said before, Oracle has been in captivity for roughly 8 years, spending most of the early years as a show snake, being taken out for educative lectures now and then. So years and years pass, and he gets more and more used to humans. It seems like he's seen it all by now. Just lives out his old years resting, absorbing the heat of the sun while I sit here talking gibberish next to him. He is often weary around new people, and gets especially nervous around uncomfortable people. It is as the rules go. If you're nervous, so is the animal in front of you. Now he was found in a village in Krabi, down south of Thailand, trapped under a sharp metal fence on someone's property as a snake rescue team was sent in to remove him. The more he tried to break free from it, the more damage he received on his back, and there was also a small dog that was biting at the end of his tail, yanking him back, causing more damage and more panic toward him, ultimately resulting in a lot more injuries. That whole situation may have been the scariest in his lifetime. Since the incident, his scales have healed up as much as they could have, but will never look like what they used to. Instead, the damaged areas here split into new smaller plates, and they seem to be their own instance of scale regeneration. Well, looks like someone's bored now. Now I think he's done a perfect job of being a great ambassador for his species and for snakes in general. It was awesome to have him out here and do a segment for you guys. So. I think it's time we have him back into his enclosure for his afternoon nap. We'll thank him for being such a good sport for us, and I'll thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.